So on Monday morning, I begin my week, as many of us do, but Mondays for me always end, as of late, in the same place, over at my daughter's uh, middle school. On Mondays, they are a part of a Christian club called First Priority. And we've been talking about our campus clubs that we as a church support. We have our campus club over at uh, Sculptor as well as over at Space Coast. And Space Coast is kicking back off this week. So I'm excited to see our Space Coast kids Tuesday morning, Miss Matako's classroom, come out. I'll have donuts. It'll be great. But on Monday... We were gathered, and one of the things that we like to do with this group, we've got about 12, 15 kids, and um, as we gather, we start the time by asking some icebreaker questions. So me and the other youth pastor, we're starting to ask the kids some questions, silly questions. I'm like, if you could be any superhero, who would you be? And the kids are like, ah, you know, Spider-Man and Superman, and nobody said Bible Man, which, you know. That hurt. But then Danny, the other youth pastor, starts to ask the kids these deep questions. And one of the questions that Danny asked the kids is, is like, how many pieces of the armor of God can you, can you name? And no lie, not a, not a sound was made in the room. Like, you could have heard a pin drop, because those kids were like, what? So Danny, knowing my girls are my girls, they're PKs, they're pastor's kids, was like, all right, Ella, Kayla, what are the pieces in the armor of God? And my daughters were like, I don't know. <laughs> the, Danny was like, have you never learned this before? And I'm over here now turning right about, I have taught my kids about the armor of God. And they're just like, blank. And, and, and it dawned on me that, like, I don't know that I've gone back over that with them in a long time. Like, it's one of my favorite lessons to teach at chapel. And the last couple of years, the, my wife works at a preschool up in uh, Titusville, and it's a, a part of a church. And they ask me every year to come in and teach that lesson about the armor of God. And I bring in all these pieces, and I've got my Wonder Woman plastic sword, and I have all of these fun things. And I love teaching this story to kids, but sometimes I'm reminded that we forget things. Mm. If we don't go back to things, we sometimes forget things. Because as I was thinking, oh my gosh, my kids don't know this, I start to then go through in my own head, there's the sword of the Spirit. I think there were shoes in there. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to remind myself of this. But for many of us, we need the support of one another to hold us accountable because had those kids worked together as a team, Kayla could have been like, I think there's a sword. And another kid could be like, I think there's some shoes. And one of the other kids would be like, it's an armory. So there's probably a helmet and a shield. And had they worked together and held each other accountable, it, it could have been accomplished. You know, we've been in this teaching series book club because we're trying to encourage our congregation to understand that we are better together and we desperately need one another. So we've been looking at how we can kind of begin to form groups so that we might grow deeper in our personal faith and wider in our personal reach so that we can go out and love others and we can grow deep in our faith with one another. So that's, that's been the whole point of book club. So my, my hope and my prayer for all of us, please hear me. If you are not connected in some sort of group, that you would be as soon as possible. That you would begin to wrestle with joining a group. And as you begin to wrestle with this, I'm sure there's still some of us who are sitting here going, okay, why does this even matter? 
Five weeks in, we've been hearing this, but, you know, I'm doing just fine on my own. I'm really good. Like, why does this, why does this even matter? Well, let me give you an answer. Because groups will help you go the distance. They'll help you go the distance in the journey of your faith. For many of us, we, we need to realize that there is a finish line up ahead. Some of us may see that finish line sooner than others, but I think everybody in the room has probably still got a, at least a good 40, 50 years, right? I mean, <laughs> something like that. We still have some time up ahead, but there's a finish line. And if we're going to go the distance in our faith, and we're going to make it to the finish line, we cannot go alone. We need one another to spur us on, to encourage us, to hold us up, and make sure that we are truly suited up for what's up ahead. So why does it even matter? Because it will help us go the distance. So again, let me say this, church. We all need a book club. We all need a small group. We need our societies that we've been talking about, our large group gatherings, we need our classes, our small group gatherings, or our interest groups. We need our bands, our accountability groups. And again, let me give a, a shameless plug. Sunday mornings at 9 a.m., there's Sunday school. I walked by this morning. That room was full of people. It's a good group to get connected with if you're not in a group. There's also Sunday evenings in the fellowship hall. It's another good group to get connected with if you're not connected. Wednesday evenings at 6.30, we're, we're diving into the Bible. It's another group to get connected with. Or maybe you just want to dip your toe in because you think some of us are weird, and you're like, we need to find, like, on a small scale. Like, the men had breakfast the other day. It wasn't that bad, right? We had a lot of bacon. It was awesome. But it's a group to get involved in. Your cardiologist might not like me. I'm sorry, but it's Okay. There's also the women's group. You can dip your toe in. You can get to know some people. Those are groups that only meet like once a month. Although the women might meet more often. Men, we're going to meet about once a month. All right, so. But hear me. I'm trying to have some fun. Trying to keep it light. Hear me. You need to find a group to connect with. So I want to conclude this series this morning by, again, emphasizing why this is so important and why this matters. So if you have a Bible, I want to encourage you. We're going to be in two places. We're going to be in the book of Galatians to begin, and then we're going to hop over into the book of Ephesians. Both of these books were written by the Apostle Paul, one to the church um, in Ephesus, and the other to the Galatians. So in Galatians chapter 6, we find Paul giving these words. This is an encouragement to the church. Paul says in chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, Brothers and sisters, if anyone is caught, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual, you who go to church, you who read your Bible, you who have a relationship with the living God, you who are spiritual should restore that person in a spirit of church. What's that next word? One more time. So it wasn't bullying. It wasn't beating them up. It wasn't making them feel bad. You should restore those who are in sin with a spirit of, one more time, gentleness. Keep watch on yourself lest you too be tempted. And then Paul goes on and he says, bear one another's burdens. Let me say this again. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Here's the first thing I want us to hear this morning. A book club can help you go the distance by bearing one another's burdens. Now, let's be honest. We all got stuff. Every last one of us who walked into this space this morning, we came here carrying some stuff. And I'm not talking about your pocketbook or your wallet 
or maybe your keys, and if you're like me, you do the pat down cell phone wallet keys every time you leave the house. I'm not just talking about that stuff. I'm talking about how some of us walked in this morning and our health is not well. Some of us were not doing physically well. We've been prolonging and putting off seeing the doctor because we're afraid what the doctor might say. Some of us are carrying the fact that we've not treated ourselves well physically, and our doctor is going to tell us that our our hearts need to be attuned, or that our tummies need to be brought down a little bit, or whatever the case may be, because we've not been doing physically well. For me personally, I was always a stress eater. When I was under a lot of stress, when things were not good, I would, and the expression is, I would eat my emotions. And it's only been as of the last year that I've been working on my health as God has been saying, this is important. But some of us came in carrying that this morning, that our health is not well. Others of us came in this morning carrying the fact that our family is not well. Maybe we have a broken relationship with one of our children. Maybe we have a broken relationship with one of our parents. Maybe we are estranged from a spouse. Maybe there is a million and one other things, but we came in this morning carrying the burden of a broken family. Others of us maybe came in this morning carrying the burden of of a broken environment at work. Maybe we're undervalued. Maybe we're under-resourced. Maybe we're underemployed or unemployed. And we came in carrying this because we're not feeling fulfilled in our vocation. Others of us, we're carrying the fact that we believe that our homes are just completely out of order. That every time you walk in, it looks like there's a miniature hurricane coming behind you. I have two of them and a dog. (laughs) There was a season in my life when my girls were younger that we didn't want to invite people to come over because anytime we cleaned up, they made a mess right behind us. It's like that video of the, the marker spinning where on one side the line is going and on the other side is the eraser, just erasing all the progress that we're making. But some of us came in carrying that burden this morning. Well, yet one more, many of us maybe came in this morning carrying the burden of finances. We don't have enough. Because I doubt there's somebody walking up to me this morning going, Pastor, I have too much money. I'd be like, please pay down our debt. You laugh because you know it's true. We carry this burden. And these burdens can feel very overwhelming. They can keep us up at night, wake us up from the dead of sleep, because our mind begins racing around the ideas that that we're carrying this. And for some of us, I, I need you to hear this. These burdens are too heavy to be picked up and carried alone. These burdens, for some of us, are not meant to be tackled on our own. And truth be told, the longer we go trying to carry these by ourselves, the more we're going to hurt ourselves. These burdens may actually be too much for you to handle. But pastor, I mean, I've always heard it said, God will never give you more than you can handle. Yes, he will. But, and this is beautiful, hear me, God will never give you more than he can handle in and through you. On our own, we cannot, but with God, we can. And one of the things that God gives us to carry those burdens is one another. So if you came in this morning carrying burdens, I want to give you a word of encouragement. Tap somebody next to you and say, hey, will you help me carry this? Come on, turn to a neighbor, turn to them, tap them, say, hey, will you help me carry this? Turn to a different neighbor. Tell them, yes, I will. Because this is the only way we can get through this is with one another. A couple years back, I was on a mission trip with our high school students. We uh, brought, I think, about six vans, 15 passenger vans worth. There was about 40, 42, 48 students that we brought up into the Appalachian Mountains to do this, this mission trip. And one of the things that I would always do, because I'd been on this trip several times, is I would always bring a big cooler, pack it with ice, 
throw Gatorades and water bottles in there for the kids. So one day we pulled out and we put down the cooler and the day was going on and, and it was a long day. It was a hot day. I'm sweating. It's crazy. And I go to grab this cooler and put it back in the van by myself and I threw up my back. Here I am now, the leader of this trip, having to take care of all of these kids and all of these adults, and I'm out for the count. And I had the best, best co-leader, Mama D, who turned to me and said, you're an idiot. <laughs> I'm hurting. She's like, you're an idiot. You should have asked for help. Some of us are too proud. Some of us think that we can carry this load on our own, but we're not meant to carry it on our own. We need each other. If we're going to go the distance in our faith, we need each other. We need each other to help us carry our burdens because when these burdens become roadblocks, we start to put things like faith on the back burner and we don't keep moving forward in our faith. We go, I have to tackle this problem before I can allow God to continue to have his will and his way in my life. And the reality is, is we need God to move forward so we need each other to carry our burdens. Let's keep moving on. Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 through 20. Ephesians chapter 6, this is the armor of God. Now, before I dive in, I need to, I need to hit one word real quick. In Galatians 6, Paul tells us that we need to bear one another's burdens. When we get into the armor of God, what we need to have in the back of our mind is this word, armor bearer. Because there was always somebody who helped you put on the armor. There was always somebody who helped you put on the armor. They called them the armor bearer. They would carry the armor. They would walk alongside. They would be an assistant to the soldier. They were the armor bearer. So when we talk about the armor of God, we need to have in the back of our minds that the armor required a companion. Got that? All right, let's dive in. Chapter 6, verses 10 through 20 says this, Finally, be strong in the Lord, and in the strength of his might put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil day, and having done all, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and for shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace and in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts or arrows of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Praying when? Praying when? Not just in the good, not just in the bad, but praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication to that end. Keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all of the saints. And also for me, Paul says that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mysteries of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Paul was in prison when he wrote these words. He was in physical chains. That I, Paul, may declare it boldly as I ought to speak, and may God bless the reading of his word. I, I love period pieces, and one of the period pieces my wife and I like to watch are kind of like old English uh, period pieces, kind of like uh, Downton Abbey style. 
And one of the things is you always find the one person dressing the royals, right? I, I heard it said once that the reason women's buttons and men's buttons are on different sides is so that somebody could help them get dressed. And when we think about placing on these different pieces of armor, the, bre- the, bless- the, blah, 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 the breastplate of righteousness is something that would be put on and then you would need help getting it fastened. Couldn't do it on your own. You put on the belt, you put on the shoes, you put on the helmet, and then once you had on all of this clunky armor, you would need somebody to lead you on your way into battle. And then when you would get into battle, you would always be standing beside brothers in arms. It was important that they wore their armor. And for us this morning, the second thing I want us to understand about our small groups is that by having a small group, by having a book club, they can help us go the distance by ensuring that we stand united in strength. That we stand united in strength. You heard the Apostle Paul say, finally, be strong. This strength is threefold. It comes from the Lord. It comes from each other. And it comes from the armor. And for us this morning, when it comes to our faith, let me encourage you, be bold. Be strong. For your strength comes from the Lord. For your strength comes from one another. For your strength comes from the armor of God which you wear. And Paul encourages the church to then put on how much of the armor? The whole armor. Any athletes in the house? Anybody ever play a sport? Probably a few of us. I've shared time and time again, my, my daughter plays soccer, and there's something that they do every game when they get uh, to the field, they run through their practice, and then the referee comes, and what does the referee do? He does a check of equipment. And what's one of the items that he always makes sure that he has to check to see that the kids have? Shin guards. And if you don't have the whole uniform, do you get to play? No, because you're not fully protected. Some of us, we might want to put on the belt of truth, but we forget to grab the sword of the Spirit. Some of us might want to put on the shoes fitted with readiness for the gospel, but we we forget to put on the helmet. Paul encourages us, put on the whole armor. And part of that armor requires that we have other people. So when we go to stand in strength wearing the whole armor of God, we need each other. This armor is to be understood as something that's provided to us by God. It is a gift, but it requires one another. Some of the armor, truth, righteousness, and salvation, they suggest that these are good character qualities that we gain by wearing the armor. And then Paul tells them, stand. Now, one sport I never played because I couldn't stand was hockey. If you ever put on ice skates, you know how hard it is to stand. But imagine now you're wearing this extra amount of weight and an armor. And it's picturing this, please. It's probably a little heavy and it's probably a little clunky and it's probably a little bit difficult to move. That's why every movie you see the guy walk like this. Not a lot of mobility. And it was difficult to stand. So Paul encourages them, stand firm. And for some of us, we struggle to stand firm because we carry burden. It's hard to put on the armor when we've got a backpack filled with other burdens. It's hard to put on the armor of God when we are allowing other things to get in the way. But if we have one another carrying that burden along with us, there's a whole lot more room for the armor of God. There's a whole lot more room. So church, I want to encourage us this morning. As we begin to wrap up this series, 
The first thing this, this morning that we said that we need to do is we need to carry each other's burdens because it will help us to go the distance. And the second thing is that we need to work with one another in order that we can uh, help each other go the distance by ensuring that we stand strong in our faith. Well, standing strong requires this armor. So I want to encourage you, church this, this, uh, church, this morning that we need to place on ourselves and on each other the belt of truth. The enemy is a liar. Satan is out to get you to distrust God. All he does is lie. But the truth is out there. The truth of God is out there. The Bible leads us to glory and our groups confirm God's truth. I've had some folks ask from time to time over the years, Pastor Chris, how do I know that what I'm hearing is from God? How do I know that God is leading me in this direction and not in that direction? Well, there's, there's two things. Test it against Scripture because God is not going to contradict himself. And if it lines up with God's word, there's a good chance it lines up with God's will. But the second thing is each other. Take it to those who know you best. I take it to my wife. Hey, I think God is leading me in this direction. If my wife goes, no, her spirit of discernment is usually 99 out of 100 times always right. I take it to my covenant group. Hey, guys, I think God is leading me in this direction. We talk about it. We pray about it. And if their answer is no, then it is not the will of God. But we need those other people or else we begin to live in an echo chamber and we just keep reinforcing what we all want anyway. And if God is for your good and we are for his glory, then we need each other. We need to speak this truth. We need to wear this belt of truth. We need to place upon our chest the, bre the breastplate of righteousness. Because it says, it's been said that Satan tends to bait our hooks with the things we most desire. And if Satan's goal is for us to take the bait, once we're hooked, he's going to reel us into sin. Now, when I say no to sin and yes to righteousness, I begin to win the spiritual battle. But when I say yes to sin and no to righteousness, I begin to lose the spiritual battle. Church, we need one another. Hold us accountable so that when the bait of the enemy is coming our way, others can help us to recognize it is not for our good and it's not for God's glory. But we need each other for this. We also need the shoes that are fitted with the readiness of the gospel. So again, that, that means that we need to know and own the gospel of Jesus Christ. In simplicity, it's the fact that God is real and that God steps out of heaven, incarnates into humanity. He lives 30 years, a perfect, 33 years of perfect and sinless life. He's then wrongly betrayed, beaten, crucified, dead, and buried. And three days later, he overcomes sin. He overcomes death. He raises to the newness of life, paying the penalty in full that all who confess the name of Jesus will find salvation. The gospel is beautiful in its complexity and its simplicity. But we need to know the gospel and be ready to use it, to stand upon it and allow it to drive us forward as we encourage one another to go deeper and deeper into the gospel. We need the shield of faith because there are constant bombardment of attacks from the world around us. There are so many things that want to pull you down and your burdens are only the beginning. With all of the things trying to distract you from God, we need the shield of faith. And more than that, sometimes we need a shield bearer. Somebody else who can walk up beside us, put their shield up, and help to block the enemy's attacks. We need one another. We need the helmet of salvation to stand guard with our minds that are constantly being bombarded with images. We did something this week, and I, I need to confess, can I do that? I'm going I'm to let you know that I'm human, and I sometimes fall short of the glory of God. Um, 
my, I love my kids. They're going to yell at me later for saying this, but um, I may have overreacted when it came this weekend to the amount of technology that they have. And I was so frustrated that they were allowing all of these images and all of these things, which we gave to them, and that's my own problem. To, we were allowing these things to get in the way that I, I, I just, in a, a moment of weakness, I pulled their TVs off the wall. I, I, I just was like, no, we need to detox this weekend. And be, before Saturday had even hit, they were already back up. You know, sometimes we can become overzealous in our hope to protect, but we do have to realize that we need boundaries in place. And if we have a brother or a sister who's in the faith who's telling us, hey, you're spending too much time on your device, you're spending too much time uh, watching the television, you're spending too much time reading the news and watching the news and listening to the news because all you do is spit off the talking points of whatever political person you're really into, that we have allowed ourselves to be wrapped up in this technology. And I'm not saying that it's inherently evil, but if we're not guarding our minds we might be led down a path that's not bringing us closer to the finish line. And lastly, we need the sword of the Spirit. The sword is the Bible. It is the Word of God. It's the the thing that helps to defend us against the attack of the liars. It's our one offensive tool. But we need each other to open the Bible, to study the Bible, to grow deeper together, to grow wider together, to grow wiser together. And this is why we've been pushing groups. We've been pushing groups so that we will stand firm. We will grow deep. We will grow wise. And we will grow wide. We need each other. So church, one last time. If you haven't found a group, if you have not found a place to connect, may today be the day you find your people. They're going to help you to go the distance. They're going to help to carry your burdens. And they're going to help to make sure that you are equipped with the armor of God so that you might stand in God's strength. So I'm going to invite our choir back up this morning, and as they make their way back up, I'm going to give us a little bit of a call to action, church. It's simple. I promise. It's simple. Here you go. You ready? If you don't have a group, begin to pray today about who you can connect with. Pray for yourself. Pray for your family. Pray for your friends. Pray for your group. Keep alert. Know that once you begin this journey of finding your people, it's going to take some work. It's going to take some refining. It's going to take some...